Hello, it's Tom Bainton here, the endometriosis fellow from the Chelsea Centre of Minimally Invasive Gynaecology. Here we have another video demonstrating the effects that endometriosis can have on the body. This is a laparoscopy on a lady who suffered with pelvic pain for some years. We'll start with a relatively normal anatomy. Here we are looking at the right ovary, which has got a smooth, white, regular appearance, about the size of a walnut. This ovary actually doesn't seem to be significantly affected by endometriosis. Zooming closer in though, we can see peritoneal deposits here on the right pelvic side wall. And when we look on the front, between the uterus and the bladder, we can see deposits here on the peritoneum. These deposits get angry every time she has a period, and there's white scar tissue around the edge, representing a site of previous inflammation. These are the uterosacral ligaments, the area between the womb and the rectum. These are quite commonly affected by endometriosis, and often give patients symptoms of pain during intercourse. These are affected on both sides in this lady. Now we move on to the elephant in the room, this very large, swollen left ovary. We can see here this red cyst on the surface is probably a normal, what we call corpus luteum, which is associated with ovulation. A little bit of pressure on the cyst, and you can see that it releases some clear fluid. This cyst is probably nothing to worry about. Underneath, however, the ovary is significantly enlarged and heavy and stuck down in the left pelvic side wall to the peritoneum around it. You can see the adhesions and scar tissue on closer examination here. A little bit of pressure on the cyst has caused some leaking of fluid, but now we're going to incise it and we can see what's inside. This is a monopolar diathermy which uses electricity to cut through the tissues. And there we can see draining of all that chocolate endometriotic fluid. You can tell why they call them chocolate cysts. This fluid has accumulated over a long period of time, contributing to an increase in the cyst size every time this lady had a menstrual period. Here we are trying to drain as much of that fluid as possible to allow the ovary to go back down to a normal size. Using our suction instrument and washing some fluid, we break down any small locules within the cyst to make sure we remove all the endometriotic fluid. Endometriomas affect between 20 and 40% of women with endometriosis and often cause significant pain, particularly during intercourse. These cysts are often found on ultrasound. Sadly, simply draining the cyst, although giving some short-term relief from symptoms, is likely to result in their reaccumulation. So the answer here is a full excision and stripping of the cyst capsule to try and reduce the risk of it coming back as much as possible. The sad truth is they do have a rate of recurrence even with full excision. The normal white tissue around the edge of the endometriotic cyst remains healthy ovarian tissue, which will go on to produce follicles and release eggs. There is, however, some collateral damage and any surgery on the ovary can potentially impact on the ovary's future function. This risk must be balanced with the effect that endometriomas themselves have on fertility and with the improvement of symptoms we see after excision. This patient went on to have a full excision of the left endometrioma and an excision of all the visible peritoneal endometriosis. Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on all our new video updates. Thanks very much for watching.